Just under a week ago, we set off on a road trip south through France toward the mountains. And apart from hitting the snow and sub-zero conditions way sooner than expected, it was going well. It's France, so the food is great, the park-ups are great, and the locals have been friendly. Very, very friendly locals. So friendly. Though this week, it is a slightly different story. I was just about to doze back off to the land of Nod, and I heard this massive bang, bang, bang on the back doors. Finally, after a six-hour detour and an unplanned change of country for the most ridiculous of reasons, we find that mountain scenery we came for. And I'd stay tuned, because I think from here on out, it's only going to get better. That is, of course, if we don't break down first. Of course we are having problems already. We've been on the road, what, three, maybe four days? No, four days I think we've been on the road and I'm losing coolant. Not at a dramatic rate, but enough for it to be a worry. So I've lost a couple of inches, not great. And for those of you that have got long memories will know why this is worrying for me. <coughs> the other symptom I've got to go with this is exactly the same as what happened to us in Spain. My temperature gauge is all over the place. So it looks like the engine's running cold. So it just drops, especially when I'm up high, when I'm at a higher altitude, it's a bit colder and I'm going slower. It's dropping down to about quarter and then it just kind of fluctuates between that and it never gets up to halfway, which is where it sits naturally. So yeah, a little bit concerning. Obviously I checked the coolant levels just before we left and it was on maximum. It had been on maximum for a few months since its last service, but since we've been here, it's dropped down to on the minimum level. So I'll top that up and then see how we go. Okay, so on the plus side, I can't see the leak where I could see it leaking before. This van is so useless in the cold, I tell you. And I've not told Emily yet because she will go into major panic mode. And I think we should just give it a day or two to see how it is. If it gets any worse and we lose, I think last time we lost our cab heaters completely. So if that happens, then I will take us straight out the mountains and find somewhere warm and probably a garage, I would think. Luckily though, I bought plenty with me. I knew, I just knew we were gonna have problems on this trip. The old funnel's a bit limp. Doesn't perform well in the cold, so I'm told. grumble at the location though look at that let me get my fat head out the way France is not letting us down for stunning park ups although the locals have not been that friendly but I'll be more on that in a minute my second problem with the van is not a major one the handbrake light is not coming on or off at all it's just gone so I think that's a simple error I don't think we've got an issue with a handbrake yet although we've had that before you can do it because all it's a handbrake it should just be a switch or something simple I would think I'm not entirely sure where we are, so I'll stick a map up. We're a little bit southwest of where we left you last time. And the drive has been, I don't know if I've put shots in yet, but the drive has been amazing and it's only going to get better. Obviously, if we make it, as <laughs> yet to be determined. But this morning, even this morning I woke up, there was a mist over the lake, the ducks are out. It's just a really beautiful spot. Just about, I don't know, 100 yards that way, there's like this little waterfall bit that comes down. Yeah, really, really, really pretty location. But I do have a third issue. My third problem is our milk situation. So yet again, we've made a fatal error that we've done before and we've bought cream to go in the tea. So this morning's tea and the coffee was not nice. Well, my breakfast was all right. And I needed a decent coffee because we was woken up at half past one, no, we moved park up at half past one last night, woken up at half past 12, so we're a bit tired. And I think Emily will tell you why, because she was more awake for it than I was. Story time. So last night I was like, in and out of sleep and then I heard this car drive past. I didn't think much of it because I actually thought it was a train to be fair and then I heard the car doors go and I was like mm, that's a bit weird but anyway five minutes passed and stuff and I was just about to doze back off to the land of Nod and I heard this massive bang 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 on the back doors 
you jumped up, I was like, Louise, someone's, someone's on the back doors. Like proper freaked out. And then it went silent, didn't it? Yeah, we've never had an experience like this. So we've had the knock before where we've been moved on at like tea time or later on in the evening, but by like a, an official, but we've never had, what was it? Like half 12, something like that? It was quarter to one in the morning. Quarter to one in the morning. <laughs> we've never had anything like that. And you was freaked out, weren't you? Which yeah. then, cause I got woken up with Emily freaking out. I was then in a state of adrenaline. So we decided the best thing to do rather than antagonize anyone was to just move. So we moved at about half past one by the time we got going, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's not the only thing because it went silent. We was like, right, what do we have weapon wise? <laughs> <laughs> A lot. A lot. And then um, like, as we was like listening and trying to like figure out what was going on, the car drove back and like all the lights were on, like on the car and stuff. And then they bibbed yeah. their horn and that, The usual toot, toot, horn toot, toon halt? The usual toon halt as it went past, so. Yeah, so definitely somebody that, you reckon it was kids? Yeah, I'll tell you why, because as we drove off, all this um, little like rectangles of paper came off the top of the van. At first I thought it was leaves, but there's not really any leaves on the tree. The next morning when we got to when we woke up at the new park up we looked there was a handprint which I've kind of can film I can't really show you properly but there's a handprint on the back window which is obviously where they smashed on there mm -hmm. and then on top of the van and like on the the bit by the back doors there's still remnants of all these little square papers so I think they must have let off one of those you know those proper things that showers all the confetti type paper out yeah, but I I don't think it was kids because like we was kind of out the way and for me if it was kids surely they would have been down there for longer but I heard the car come. I don't mean kids like teenager. Teenager. Like, yeah, older, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they obviously drove. How many doors did you hear open? A couple. Oh, so there was more than one of them. Anyway, the yeah. reason we didn't film it because obviously at that time in the morning, my first reaction is not to pick up the camera. It was just to make sure that everybody Safety. was safe and comfortable. So we moved. But the reason we're telling you is so that we document a true case of events because otherwise it could look like oh Emily and Lou they go out there two girls all the time they've mm. never had any trouble they get on great so like I say it's the first time in three years and definitely the first time in France I'm proper shocked it's happened in France because France is very very accommodating for camper vans yeah but it was a little bit I think because we've not had it before and it was in the middle of the night I was like whoa <laughs> this is a little bit weird tell them what AJ did our, our brave <laughs> oh, guard dog brave guard dog Nothing. Slept through it. Slept through it. <laughs> Bit of wind goes and he's like... <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like it when, the, when there's wind, but someone banging on the back doors, letting off poppers and tooting their own at us. No, he's fine. Nothing. Slept through. Anyway, shall we hit the road? Yes, let's do it. We left our love with question marks, with broken hearts. I went home my life without you. Another one of our minor issues is AJ's coat is broken. It's a... Uh, lost its Velcro. Oh here. I think it's uh my washing has struck again. <laughs> you overwashed it. <laughs> yeah. We need to find you a new coat, buddy. Gotta give him a new one, ain't we, bud? Hey, you gotta keep him warm. Obviously from here on in, if we do make it further into the mountains, it's only gonna get colder, so he needs a proper coat. So we're gonna are you just gonna go and check if he's allowed in? Yes I will. We're we'll going to a pet shop. Oh it's exciting content for you oh, this week, isn't it? Thrilling, no. riveting. Yeah, but this is stuff that could happen to everybody, so it's informational stuff. Hashtag real van life, I think, is the trend. He was a very good boy in the pet shop, didn't nick any toys. They didn't have any coats big enough for him, unfortunately, but Emily is just replenishing his snack supply for his snack cupboard, and then we're just gonna have to try and find another pet shop. Pet shops two and three were a bus too, so we just kept on driving. If I'm honest, I think I was using this quest to find AJ a new coat as a distraction from our engine worries. Eventually, completely off plan, we found ourselves at the Swiss border. Yeah. Vignette there. What's it saying about Vignette? Next there. building. Next building. Yeah, I think he's... Selling vignettes? Yeah. But we've got no cash. Oh, oh not that Not, of not cash. francs. We haven't got any Swiss francs. francs. Oh, no. He might take euros. Oh, but I haven't got that many. Oh, look, he's got a card machine, I think. He is the vignette man. I'm going next 
Bonjour. Bonjour. Le mot de France, s'il vous plaît. 40 francs, oui. Thank you. Inside Merci. on the left. Inside on the left. Yours. Thank you very much. Bon Merci Thank beaucoup. You. Thank you. Oh, we've never been to uh, Switzerland. A whole new country. I know, new country, bud. How much was you been yet? Um, 40 francs. So I think that's like 30, 30 quid, something like 35 pounds, something like that. Oh, we're in Switzerland! Why are you excited? <laughs> yeah. We're not meant to be in Switzerland. Yeah, we're not meant to be in Switzerland, but I think we're going to stay here for a little bit, aren't we? Well, why not? We've just paid 40 francs for our vignette. Exactly, so well, the cupboards are full, we've found milk. We're in Switzerland! <laughs> we still haven't got a dog coat though. That's why we're in Switzerland. All the way to Switzerland for a flipping coat. For, for the you, dog. bud. For you. Desperately trying to find things to do in Switzerland, aren't you? I am. I am. And I found a few good things, Louise. You're going to be pleasantly surprised with my research. How's it looking? It's looking good. There's a few things I want to see. So Are you excited for Switzerland then? I am. We might be in London a lot before. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Switzerland is notorious for being expensive and we've come in completely empty of fuel. So we're going to check out the costs. Idiots. Absolute idiots. Oh, welcome to episode two of How Not to Van Life from yeah. Camper Vibe. Learn from us, please. <laughs> In Switzerland, summer. What do you reckon then? Can we the Swiss mountains? It's 2.12 Swiss francs, which is about one pound eighty-six, and we're on the main motorway at the minute, so it's exactly the same price. We're paying like two ten euros on the motorways in France, so there's no real difference actually. So yeah, one pound eighty-six, which is not too bad at all. Bear in mind these are motorway prices that I'm comparing. So yes, I know at home you might be able to get it cheaper in like your local supermarket and whatnot, but these are motorway prices, so it's always going to be that much dearer. So one pound eighty-six. That all you got? Just coffee? Yeah. No, just just coffee, just the coffee for you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just one for you. You don't drink them. I don't drink coffee. I drink coffee all the time. But you don't like them. Right, she doesn't like them from there, so don't let her fool you. I don't you. like them cold coffees, but a nice warm coffee on this freezing day on this long drive when I've had fuck all sleep would have been lovely. <laughs> don't get you a coffee. No, I'm sorry, John. Let's go. You don't like them from that shop. You're just playing up. I can see a biggish coat, I can see a biggish coat. Haha, oh, big large coat, thermal. That's what he wants. After blowing our entire budget for this trip on some fancy Swiss clobber for AJ, we headed for the nearest park up. To say it was special, well, that would be an understatement. You want to go out? Yeah. You do? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, looks like we're going out. It had been a long day for all of us, so after a quick check of the coolant, AJ was keen to check out his new gear. Our Husky Cross is now better kitted out for winter van life than we are. What a place to wake up. There's nothing to ease your worries like waking up next to a river between two sets of mountains. Absolutely stunning. I'm just about to check the coolant level. Emily's in the van, busy working away. There Hello. she is. One thing we do not have to worry about on the road is our online security. We have been using a VPN, Nord VPN to be specific, for as long as we've been traveling in this van. Basically, it masks our IP address, protecting us from nasty online fraudsters. The threat protection feature is really good too. We have it turned on in our settings, even if we aren't connected to a VPN. This way it stops intrusive ads, it blocks malware, and just protects you from all those horrible things that could happen to you while using the internet. 
We really, really like it because it is so easy to use. You literally just open up the app, click on a country, and that is it. You are connected. And the massive bonus for us is we can use it to watch online catalogues on streaming services such as Netflix when we're traveling. A huge bonus when you're living in a van. You can have it on up to six devices. So for example, we've got it on both our phones, our tablet, and both our laptops. So we're always protected. If you want to protect yourself online, then head to nordvpn.com forward slash campervibe to grab yourself a two year plan with an exclusive offer plus a bonus month on top. And if you don't like it, there's always NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. That's cold. Oh, the coolant level is absolutely, whoa, that is bright. The coolant level is absolutely fine, by the way. So still got the same amount as what we had in yesterday. So I'm quite happy with that. The reason I'm not panicking too much is because I just remembered once we had the engine swapped, so when the old engine was thrown away, we had a reconditioned engine put in here. And I remember now it happened shortly after that went in once it got cold and I had a few issues with it. And then the garage that did it didn't want to know, but eventually it just seemed to rectify itself. So we're going to give it a few more days. I'll just keep checking it after every drive and after every single night, make sure it's not dropping. So it's just that temperature gauge, which is worrying me. Could be a few things, could be a stuck jammed um, thermostat. The cooling fan, the radiator cooling fan was a big problem with what went wrong with it last time. So that could be an issue or it could be the oil cooler. So I'll just keep an eye on, on it. And if I have any issues, I'll take it to a garage. It is very cold, I'm struggling to speak. And me and Emily now, we're off to check out a giant fork. It's a big fork, the ultimate snack eating tool. Now it might seem a strange thing to have in the middle of the city, but it's because it goes with the food museum here, which is only across the road. The thing that I like about this most is that it did actually get taken down after it had been in for a little bit, but the locals put a petition together to have it reinstated because they loved it that much. And it stands eight meters tall. It's in the Guinness World Record book for being the tallest fork, but actually it's not because there are two other forks around the world that are taller at 11 meters and 12 meters. It's cool, right? And it's cool to have the fun facts black, black in the vlog, back in the <laughs> vlog. It may look warm and sunny, but I can't speak properly. It's absolutely freezing, isn't it? It is a cold that hurts. <laughs> it hurts your skin. This is Lake Geneva. And our real reason for coming here is one, because it's kind of on the way to where we're going, but also we're going to go and check out a church. Yes, a church. I'm very excited for that as well. We're showing you all the good stuff today. That's a proper road trip now. We've got engine problems and we're looking at churches. We're on the way, folks. We're on the way. <laughs> Chateau, yeah, castle. Chateau de Chillon, that's where we're going. I told you it was not, a castle. Not church. I Ooh. told you it was a castle. You're always right, aren't you? I am always right. That's, you remember that. <laughs> I don't get a chance to forget, <laughs> believe me. We've come off the main road and I've dropped down so that they're driving right alongside the lake. It's very, very pretty. It's very built up, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, very commercial. And I do think that in summertime it would be absolutely heaving, but luckily it's not too bad today. Is that a lake? Because it looks like the sea to me. Yeah, it's Lake Geneva. Because it looks like the sea, I'm not going to lie. It's a big lake. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm certain. When you put your little drop pins in of all the things you wanted to look at, did you not see it was a lake? Oh, uh, yeah, well, it makes sense. Well, how could it be the sea? The, uh, Switzerland's <laughs> landlocked, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Don't put that in. It's pretty cool, there's wall around and it used to have a drawbridge. Chilean Castle is special because of where it's built. It's built into the rock face and this type of structure would normally be built on a square footing. It's surrounded by crystal clear water and it used to have a drawbridge, which I think is so, so cool. They found the first writings of it around 1150, but they think it was built hundreds of years before that. And it's part of a restoration system that's been there since like 1892. And I just think it's such a cool building. It's not even a building, is it? It's, just, it's a castle for God's sake. It's, it's amazing. Not a church as I thought it was. No, it's clearly not a church. Look at it, it's awesome. What's more amazing is we're leaving here now. We're not going inside. You can go in 13, 50 francs, which would be about 11 quid-ish, I think, to go in each. So not too bad, but we're gonna go and do something way more exciting, hopefully, if it's open, if we can get in. When I will, hold 
your time. Are you excited because we're going up? Oh, first hairpins of the trip. First hairpins of the trip. Big climb. Come on, Fanny, you've got it in you. No. Behind us there, we're going tobogganing. Yeah, I'm so excited, I feel like a big kid. We're the only adults. After some time was spent mastering the art of getting in these weird rubber rings, we headed up for our first go. <laughs> that was so fast. It felt a little bit like Eddie. <laughs> uh, the GoPro go in the descent. Now I had two challenges to get Emily on the big girl runs and try and film how fast and fun this is. Are we doing it? We are, aren't we? We are, aren't we? You go. <laughs> Obviously, I was sent down first for a test run, and I've got to admit, it's a pretty scary drop-off. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend going down spinning either, if you can help it. It was with a bit of persuasion that I finally got Emily to come down with me. Honestly, it's so, so fast. But I tell you what, it's so, so much fun. I'm so glad we've done it. Glad good good idea by me. You're glad you've done the big one in the end. Yes, glad I've done the big one. I did, I feel like I needed a nervous poo, but. <laughs> <laughs> as, as she told everyone at the top of the hill. <laughs> good job they all speak French, innit, not English. I know, right? Yeah, and they don't understand that part. <laughs> but you're hungry now, aren't you? Oh, I need, I need like a sugar rush because of like the adrenaline and stuff. And that's your excuse and like... you're sticking to it. Exactly, right? Chocolate. <laughs> drive that was apologies if there's absolutely loads and loads of road footage but I'm very excited to finally be here as you can probably tell Emily's just gone off to pay this is a paid for like designated park up I think it's 10 francs for the night which is going to be about eight quid but it's right next to something really cool that Emily wants to go and see first thing in the morning so I do like to park it is nice when you park right next to something that you want to do in the morning because you just get up and go and do it so so yeah, mountain drive was all right. I was a bit nervous about our first mountain pass of this trip, but the roads are really clear. It was really easy. Bit steep, coming down's always a bigger worry, but we made it and like I say, it was an absolutely beautiful drive. And I think that's gonna do us for today because all the concentration, that's why I didn't vlog too much because I had to really concentrate on my driving. Engine braking, there's still quite a bit of ice on the road. So you have to be careful as you go around the bends not to catch those, but yeah, not too bad, but I am knackered. So we will see you lot tomorrow, maybe, when we go and look at this thing that's over there. Hey, 
the inevitable has happened, the pipes are frozen. I'm surprised we've got away with it this long, to be honest, but we should have drained them out last night, really. Um, I think we've been lasting in like minus four, minus six, but for some reason here, although it says it's only minus three, it's now cold. I haven't even been able to brush my teeth this morning. The sink is blocked, but apparently she has a plan. Before I go and sort the pipes out, I'll tell you where we are. We are just outside, literally a few minutes walk from a little town called... Gregory? <laughs> Neither one of us is going to get it right, so we'll just put a thing up on the screen. It looks like a really cool place on Google, and I've had the drone up this morning and seen some of it. But have you got any info about this town we're in? I have not. I am very ill-prepared, so no fun facts. But I do know that it looks pretty cool, but it's meant to anyway. It's medieval, there is a castle there, which... Obviously, I love castles, so I can't wait to go and see it. But yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to be pretty. Also, it's famous for cheese. And we will go there this afternoon. I just won't have time to properly film and edit and get it in this video. So hopefully, we've managed to get a few shots to overlay over the top. Frozen. <laughs> Having a bit of trouble there, Louise. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can see all the ice. Really? Plan B. Come on. You're felt, are you? Yep. <laughs> See ya. Have fun. So therein lies the problem. All the ice in there is obviously going to happen. That's the one I cut it off, but I have a second inlet there and this pipe's long enough that when I want to reconnect it, I'll just connect it up to that second inlet or try and get that off at some point. But for now, I just want to defrost this to get the water out of the sink and then we'll leave this loose. We did bring with us some extra containers, so we'll just collect the waste in the containers and then dispose of in the appropriate place. And I think that's just how we're going to have to do it. And for the water, we've got extra um, jerry cans in the garage. So for now, I'm just going to drain down the system and then leave it. I know some of you are going to ask why I didn't insulate the tanks. Now, the, the problem with insulation, the misconception is that insulation stops them from freezing. It doesn't. It just means it will take longer for them to freeze. On the flip side of that, it will take longer for them to defrost. And where we're going, the insulation is going to be like minus 10, minus 15. They're going to freeze, insulated or not. So rather than spend a fortune and loads and loads of time heating my tanks and doing all of that, I thought we'd come here, see if we actually like it, see if the engine can survive the cold, because I'm still not sure. I haven't checked the coolant today, but I'll let you know in a minute. Yeah, and then if we like it, then next winter, and the van survives, I will do the tanks properly so that this isn't a problem or come up with a better system. But for a trial run for a couple of weeks, we're just going to use big jerry cans out of the garage. It'll work. Some successes and some failures. The waste is defrosted. Emily had to take AJ out because he did not like all the banging and pulling of the pipe, but they're back. And what have you discovered, Em? That we're flooded underneath the kitchen sink. <laughs> In all of my pulling to get the pipe off, I've completely pulled it off of the bottom of the sink altogether. So yeah, that's happened. And then luckily, AJ's dog bowl has managed to catch most of it. Although our veg and fruit might be a little bit ropey. Just as well like I'm cleaning today, isn't it? How do you feel about winter van life today? Loving it. Loving it. <laughs> the trials and trials and tribulations.
the coolant level is all good, which is pleasing to see. The temperature gauge, I'm afraid, is still all over the place. The whole drive yesterday, it was just up and down, up and down, really dropping quite low. So I'm a bit worried about that. I must be, because if I look tired, it's because I didn't sleep very well last night either. And I was dreaming about breaking down on the steepest of mountain passes, on a bend and a lorry coming up the hill. Oh, it was an absolute nightmare. So yeah, it must be concerning. And then obviously with the locals banging on the van the other night, I think we're just a little bit on edge, but You've seen the scenery, it is a stunning place to come in the winter. Carnage as in shoot. Look at the state of it in here. You've made such a mess, Emily. I'm sorry, who's made the mess? Oh my God, it really is so messy as well. And I'd spilt coffee everywhere. So that, that's just, yeah. Go to the Alps, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Love and life. Oh, what a couple of days, you enjoyed it? It's been, it's had its ups and downs, let's put it that way. Uh, for me, the highlight, if anyone's wondering, is it worth doing this kind of trip? For me, seeing AJ run around like a loony in that snow was absolutely worth it. It was like having a puppy again, wasn't it? Oh, honestly, he, yeah, it was just so nice to see him so happy like that. It's, yeah, it's really nice. Definitely worth it for that, for sure. And a few of you have asked if he's going to be all right in the cold because of, of his legs. Now, and I get it, I get why, because you do think, well, cold weather, arthritis. The cold like this is actually better for him than like the damp... Like, not rain so much, but like the damp air, you know, like when it's just yeah. like, like autumn going into winter and then winter into spring, it doesn't cope well for his joints. Anyone with joint issues probably knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, no, he generally, that's when his leg plays up is when there's that moisture, horrible moisture in the air. But in this, oh, he's all over the bloody place. Um, I'd love to know what you guys have enjoyed about this video, whether you prefer the down, you know, the daily van life problems or whether you just prefer the scenery and the drone shots because... You know, we get, we're going to have it all on this trip, I think, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. And because we're going to have it all, we can't always just sh show epic drone shots because we've got to do so much crappy day life stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, let us know in the comments whether you like the crappy day life stuff or the epic drone shots. And we will see you, if you're subscribed, hopefully, on the next one. See you then.